Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Chris. Chris is from South Africa. So let's see what Chris has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hi, William. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Very good. I'm very well. Thanks so much. Thanks for taking the time of Saturday for the interview. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, I'm using wireless wireless earphones and I've never used them on this specific laptop. So the, it's okay. Yeah. I can hear you perfectly. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Chris, tell me where are you from? Um, I'm from South Africa, sunny South Africa. Oh, wow. Where's about in South Africa? All right, so uh, it's a very small town uh, on the west side of Johannesburg called Randfontein. Randfontein. Yes, you've got it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the best part of living there? Well, it's a very small town, so I grew up here. Um, I've been away for a while and then I came back to my parents. So. I, th I must say the the best thing about it is it's a very quiet town. Um, so if you if you are looking for peace and quiet, then this is this is one of those perfect little spots that you need I, to be. I see. And how far are you from the Johannesburg? From Johannesburg is about thirty five minutes. I thought far. Not too far. No, it's it's not really far. So, uh, yeah, that's unfortunately the thing with the small town is if you you know if you want if you want to get proper work, then you're gonna have to travel. Um, See. But otherwise, it's yeah, it's a very quiet town. It's it's very chilled. <laughs> and what do you do for a living? Um, well, I've been unemployed for a while due to COVID. Right. But myself and two of my uh, previous colleagues that I was working with a couple of years ago, we decided to go into business for ourselves. So um, for the last three months, we've been working nonstop advertising and promoting our brand new business. Um, wow. So, yeah, yeah, so that's but that's what we currently basically just doing, just promoting uh, our brand new business. Amazing, amazing. Okay, Chris, so just before we start our journey, William and the Magic Box, I would like you to tell me something interesting about yourself. All right, um, something interesting. Okay, so basically interesting about myself is I enjoy life. Uh, I try to enjoy life to the fullest. So um, I am, I've never been someone to sit back and wait for something to happen. So I've always tried new things when, especially when it comes to business. Um, and I do believe in, you know, having a good balance in life, um, which includes basically meditating um, you know, and also spending your time learning new things um, which drives not only your personal life, but also your business life. Beautiful. Amazing. I like that. <laughs> right, Chris, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Yes, let's do that. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. I have to hear of run the fun questions okay i'm just gonna play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question okay awesome awesome that's the point. right chris from south africa right so just before um we start the game so for the journey if there is a question that you don't have an answer for you don't want to answer for some reason i always can change okay it's all very friendly Okay, 100%, thank you. By the way, saying that, I've got a very good friend of mine. His name is Chris, and he's from South Africa, and he's flying tomorrow to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's from Port Elizabeth. All right, awesome. So yeah. another South African. Yeah, he's trying. he was trying to, to go home for the last um, two years, but because of the COVID situation, he wasn't able. So he's very happy that he's flying tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome news. So he's, he's, um, I think he's happy to see his family. Absolutely. Okay, the first question for you is, what has been the happiest point of your life? 
the happiest point of my life. Um, when we visited Cape Town, so um, me and my partner has been together for about eight years now. And wow. I think about four years ago, we decided that we, you know, we needed a trip away. We needed to get away for a couple of days and we decided to go to Cape Town. And so if you've ever seen any pictures of Cape Town, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yep. You know, Table Mountain, uh, Cape Point, uh, you know, the wine, um, the winelands of South Africa. So we basically spent a couple of days just doing stuff that I've never done, like visiting wine farms, visiting Cape Point, um, and literally driving from Cape Town all the way to Cape Point, driving back through all those small little towns. And it was really, really amazing. It was one of those things in my life where for me, especially being someone that has never left the country, um, it really felt like I left my country and I went to another country. So it was really amazing. And it was just, uh, and it was an eye opener for us, especially for South Africans, knowing that, you know, there's a lot of things happening, uh, very negative things happening in our country, but being able to go to a place where if you just look at what is around you, nature and everything that's out there, it makes life worth living. So that was my best moment in life. Oh, beautiful. And your partner is from the same town as you or not? He's actually one town away, but we stay together in Ranfontein at the moment. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we basically in the same vicinity. Amazing. Next question. Let's do it. I can see you like dancing. Amazing. <laughs> definitely, eh? definitely. Okay, next question for you is, what does happiness mean to you? What does happiness mean to me? Being uh, being happy with yourself. Um, for me, it all starts with yourself. You know, most people, um, myself included, at one stage, you always look for happiness outside. You look for happiness in work. You look for happiness in, in um, you know, your house or your uh, belonging stuff you've got, or you look for happiness in someone else. Um, for me, it's all about looking in inward and finding happiness within yourself. Uh, for me, you know, it's because if you're a happy person, uh, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what what is being thrown at you, anything, any opportunity, any relationship, anything you buy, anything you do, um, any relationship that you've got, will automatically have that happiness within it. So for me, it's all about being happy with who you are, uh, being with ha be ha being happy with how you look, how you feel, and that sort of thing. So it's all an inside thing for me. Absolutely. I think being happy, it's just be yourself, be with yourself. Don't look for happiness in other people, in other places. It's about yourself. Happiness comes from you. That's correct. Yes, that's exactly how I feel. Next one, let's do it. Chris, before the next question, tell me what, uh, through this three months journey of your business, what have you been enjoying the most and what's the most challenging part so far? All right, so what I've enjoyed the most is learning. So uh, I just actually mentioned it to one of my partners the other day, is like every single thing that I've done in life um, I've learned, I am a person that loves learning new things. So especially now within these last three months, I've learned designing um, more in depth. So it's something that I've wanted to do and I've done a few courses on it, but now being able to, or being pushed basically into that direction of, we need to design our company. We need to design our stationery, our logos, our um, you know our marketing material, our brand, and being able to market that. Um, so all of that is something that I've learned over the last few months: how to do certain things, how to use the programs to my disposal, and and something that I'm, it's ongoing is basically how to market um, you know our business. So something that is challenging, obviously, is. Um, being able to stand out um, mm -hmm. within our market, number one, and obviously uh, in a changing environment, being there are so many companies that are doing things online these days. 
and yep. one of the things that we want to do is also make life easier for our clients by you know being able to do everything online um and also you know some people most people don't want to meet with you face to face um you know due to their being scared of covid and that sort of thing so getting used to that being you know that online presence and and yeah just putting our brand out there and getting people to notice it that that is some of the difficult challenges good next question for you is what makes you a unique person what makes me a unique person oh, wow um that's a question and a half um <laughs> I, i would have to say personally the way that i think about things in general um i'm, I'm sometimes conflicted with what i've been taught and what i've been you know what i've basically learned um in my lifetime so for me it's all about being different um but it's obviously it comes with its own challenges um trying to overcome what you've learned and what you were taught um but yeah i think what makes me unique is just the fact that um i look at things differently no matter what situation comes um i try to dissect it um and see how it can work for me how it can work for my family uh, and how what we can do about it instead of just you know especially when it comes to family just to give you an idea uh, you know family sometimes they are the closest relationship that you have but it's also the most toxic one that you can ever have in your life so the you know overcoming that challenge of you know when a situation arises what are you going to do about it are you just going to start fighting about it or are you going to dissect the situation and you know find an even ground for everyone so that we can basically dissolve the problem before it you know start becoming an issue so yeah i think that's something different is is where just for me to always find an alternative solution to something whether it's a good or a bad thing Very good, Chris. Good for you that you have this mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Next word. Next question for you is, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Um, to be quite honest, self-doubt sometimes. Um, you know, there's always this thing, especially because um i lost my job about a year ago and i went through a difficult time accepting it so for me um i've never gone through this experience so you know if i wanted to get a better job or better salary i moved on you know i found something else it was always my decision it always felt like i was in control about you know my life and what is happening so when i lost my job last year um it was a strange feeling for me because i wasn't in control of that decision it wasn't mine to make it was made for me um so it took me a couple of months to to understand or to try and understand what has happened to me and 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 also to accept you know um uh, i cannot change it so i have to move on so yeah so it is sort of self doubt in the way that um have i done enough today to build a better future. Um you know there there's days um that I that I feel um you know like I I don't have the energy to go full out um to do everything that I maybe planned for that specific day. Um then at night, you know, when I when I try to sleep, um I would like you know all these things will run through my mind like you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this and that's where the self doubt comes in like why you know then i try to find fault or i try to find a problem with why did i not do it so i try to justify myself so yeah so self doubt i must say is, is something that that does creep up and sometimes it keeps me awake i know it's it's very interesting you saying that because uh yes sometimes when you are in this 
moment when you cannot sleep because there's so much thing going on in your mind. Uh, once I heard that sometimes, just don't fight against it. Let this thought comes, try to understand, but don't go like, oh, I need to sleep, or I need, I don't want to think about that, so I don't want to, you know what I mean? Just let it come, let it come, let it come. Let it happen. Mm. Yeah, it will go naturally one point. When I heard that, I was like, oh my God, thank God, because, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes you fight, oh my God, I, wanna, I don't want to think about that, so I, I need to sleep, or oh, this make me you know what i mean awake it's keep me awake for the night but yeah. since since i since I, I i learned that i just when i start thinking about things during the night i just let it come at one point I just fall asleep naturally but i know what i mean it can be hard sometimes it can yes. keep you on and on and on and on and it's very difficult to get rid of it <laughs> definitely definitely next question chris Before the next one, so through these eight years relationship, what's the most beautiful lesson you've learned so far from your partner? Patience. <laughs> This was very quick <laughs> <good> answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I must say, uh, well, I'm not there yet, but patience <laughs> is, is something that, um, that I have learned um, because It, it's not diff you know it's it's easy running your own life when you are single you have your own rules you do what you want you go where you want um you know there's no one else that you have to think about besides yeah. yourself and so before this relationship you know i haven't really had um a meaningful relationship it's always on and off sort of thing with six months eight months 12 months you know so You, you, you don't know what it is to actually have someone in your life that you have to spend every single day with. And especially the last two years since both of us were basically at home. And uh, so we were in each other's face the whole time. But definitely patience because sometimes you just, as I said earlier, you have to step back um, when something happens. And you have to first understand maybe where that person is coming from before you start, you know, fighting back or judging or, you know, looking for an excuse not to deal with the problem. But yeah, definitely patience. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, next question for you is, what's your spirit animal? My spirit animal? I'm not, I'm not sure. To be honest with you, I, I am not 100% sure. And what's your connect? Which animal you have more connection with? When? What's your favorite animal? Well, to be quite honest, uh, a do basically dogs. I have a very, very good connection with dogs. Um, I've always, like, even when I was a young boy, I always had some sort of puppy running around or you know sleeping with me in my bed um and um so yeah i must say it, it, it's definitely dog and do you have one dog now at the moment or not um where i'm staying because we currently have uh, we we're currently living um in a garden cottage in uh, at the back of my parents uh, house so oh. so where we are staying yes there's about four dogs wow so yeah there's always <laughs> There's always there's always action happening, yeah. <laughs> And what their names? Uh, okay, so we've got two Charles. They are black Charles, Chow Charles, and they are called Duke and Duchess. Ooh. And then we have a little Pekingese. Um, her name is um, I think Nikki. It's not really my dog. It's very very small. One of those small little puppies that's inside the house most of the time and then we have a jack russell called um what is his name now i forget it's one of those just just run around and irritates me sometimes um <laughs> but yeah so so my dogs are actually the chow chows um they're very quiet um and you know they only make noise when they have to And they, they're more like, one of them are actually more like a cat. He will come to you when he wants attention. You're not allowed to touch him otherwise. So he will allow you to touch him when he wants that. So, wow. yeah. Big personality. <laughs> <laughs> very, very big personality, yes. Next question. Chris from South Africa. Next question for you is, 
what a negative thing that happened to you that came out as a positive thing in the end? Yeah. So there's a few, but I'm going to just, I'll just mention one. <laughs> um, so a couple of years ago, before I met my current partner, um, yeah, I was dating someone. Um, we were literally on and off for about two years. And what happened before that relationship was the type of person that I was um, when I was younger was a very unforgiving um, straight person in the, in the in the fact that no matter how big or small a lie is, I will never forgive you. Um, and then I met this person and we had an on and off to your relationship and there was a lot of things that happened within that period that I need to forgive him. I, I forgave him every single time, which which made me a better person in the long run, obviously not in the relationship. The relationship was very toxic at that stage because I kept on forgiving this person. And, um, you know, he, he basically just, whatever he did was just, he just kept on doing the same thing. So um, what came out of it was that, and, and I think that's how I am today is basically not just accepting yes or no not basically not just um judging straight out of the bat not not um you know it's where i have to sit and evaluate mm -hmm. you know the circumstances surrounding uh, something whether it's positive or negative i have to evaluate so it basically you know i i learned that excuse me by by just taking a step back and just breathing and just evaluating the circumstance, I can make a better decision instead of just being rash. Um, because, you know, fr I went from being a very, um, I just took rash decisions in the, in the, in the concept of judging people. And then immediately I changed that over where is I forgave people just as quickly. So I went, you know, I did a 360. So out of this whole experience, it basically just taught me that, you know what, just take a step back, take a breather and evaluate this, the, you know, your surroundings before you make a decision. So just, you know, just take that little moment. Very interesting. Oh my God, I need to learn that more or put more in practice, practice that <laughs> because sometimes when yes. things happen, it's quite difficult for you to whew, breathe for a minute and just relax. I know it can be very hard. That's true. That's, yeah. that's very, very true. Next question. Okay, Chris, next question for you is, if you could meet yourself when you were 15 years old again, which advice would you give to yourself? Study harder. Why is that? Okay. So for me, it's, it's not about, it's not about studying going to university, getting a degree. Yes, that's all good. It's all good. But study in the process of enhancing yourself. So it's not just about being able to get a job and do a work or start a business. So study even yourself as a human being. Learn to use your mind. Learn to use uh, your senses. Um, get clarity on where you want to go and what you want to do before you just jump in because I, I know from my own personal experience um you know we were taught to you you if you do study you need to study and then go and get a job or you have to get out of school go get a job and just work for 40 or 50 years of your life um there was no there was no dreams like dreams weren't important um and so if i have to ever have the chance to go back to my 15 year old self i would tell them dream and live towards your dreams and enhance yourself learn about everything in life um whether it's relationship whether it's networking whether it's sales whether it's business whether it's interpersonal skills um you have to have that vast knowledge um, you know, because at the end of the day, it makes you a better person and being able to relate to 
everyone out there um, within your network will make you that person that people will come to for advice, for business, for, um, you know, friendship, whatever. Uh, you'll basically have that attraction towards, you know, to, to, to yourself. Um, and it will just make it so much easier to get through life. Yeah, imagine if you could go back in time and have this mindset. <laughs> It would be perfect. <laughs> Definitely, I would love it. <laughs> Three questions left for you, okay? Let's do it. Next question for you, Chris. Which book had a big influence on you? Um, so, yes. There's a book called Seven Skills um, to Seven Figures. Uh, it's by Matt Morris. Um, it's basically uh, a network marketing book. So it's, it's all about network marketing, how to be successful in network marketing. But it, what I loved about the book, it, it's, it's not just that. So Matt didn't stop, you know, he, he didn't just use it as a business tool. He uses it as a personal tool to grow yourself as a, as you know, as an in, individual person. So uh, he teaches you how to, how to be able to just speak to people, mm -hmm. how to interact, um, how to use everything that's at your disposal um, to not only be a better salesperson, a better business person, but also to be a better person mm -hmm. um, in all of those circumstances. So um, because when I bought the book, it was all about network marketing and how how to create a network and, and how to to you know create sales and, and and that sort of thing but when i read it I, i started realizing that it's so much more because he's literally taking you through his 25 year journey of where he's been and what it took you know for him to reach his you know to reach his goals and his dreams and how many changes he had to make mindset changes and and how he looked at certain things and how important it is to learn from other people and from other people's mistakes um, and once again enhance himself um, with reading and educating himself um, and and I, I do sometimes watch his podcasts and I read his email newsletters that he sent and it, it's just fascinating to see how this person that once had less than nothing uh, is now a multimillionaire in you know he lives in America he's got a beautiful family um, and he's still a humble person um, just because you know where he was and and his whole journey wow but I'm gonna check it out for sure I will check it out please <laughs> two questions left for you let's do it there we go Before the next one, tell me so far um, through this challenge journey, uh, the COVID crisis, what have you taken, like the positive side of it so far? I think I think the, the important thing is is that we we need to stick together. Um, you know, I, I I've I, I've been lucky, uh, but we as a family has been very lucky that. Although some of us have, you know, they, they, they contracted the virus, um, we did not, it wasn't as bad as people that we've known um, or people that we've heard about. And, and so, and I realized that it's so important to spend quality time with people. Um, yes, although circumstances has pushed me to live with my parents, um, During this COVID, I it was it, I was actually happy to be here because I know of people that couldn't see their family for two years, like you just mentioned, your friend. Um, I know of people that was in uh, the UK. Um, also, they couldn't travel back. Um, I have friends that stayed in the UK for the last year and a half. They couldn't see she couldn't see her mother. Um, 
And so I just realized that you have to be, no matter what the circumstance, you always have to be there as a family. Yes, we, we fight, we have differences, but your family is the people that's going to be with you through the difficult challenges and the difficult days. And, you know, when it goes, when it when when it's good, when things are good in our life, we tend to forget about the, the people closest to us. And I realized that it's just in an instant and they, they're gone. Um, and, you know, you have to, you have to value those moments that you have your, with your family, whether it's, you know, a day or two or a month or a year, uh, however long you have to spend with your family, you have to appreciate it, you have to value it and you have to make the most of it. Good. Next question for you is, what makes you the saddest? <sighs> what makes me the saddest? Um, To be quite honest, um, in my personal life, it's it's all about misunderstandings, mm -hmm. um, and you know sometimes you you whether it's a family, a friend, um, or even a loved one very close to you, there's a misunderstanding. Now I'm the type of person that I cannot go to bed knowing that there's something wrong between me and you, for instance. If we had a massive fight and you mean something to me, I'm that type of person that, you know, I want to settle it before I go to bed. And mm -hmm. most of those things happen out of misunderstandings. And, um, you know, so, yeah, and sometimes you do get people that they tend not to speak about something that has happened. They would rather try and forget about it. So mm -hmm. for me, yeah, it does make me sad knowing that there's this situation and I cannot solve it. So I, I don't know if it's just a sad moment or it's a fact that I'm not in control. Um, but yeah, it does bother me. Something like that, especially depending on how big or small the situation is, something like that can can take a long time for me to, you know, to get over and to move on. So yeah it, it tends to it tends to lead me into being a little bit of depressed and, and being sad and so yeah definitely something that is not cool okay i think work in progress yeah we try to understand the things when it comes <laughs> that's true that's true we, we need to chris ready for the last one yes let's do it next question let's do it <laughs> Last question for you, Chris. When was the last time that, what was the last thing that made you smile? Now I have to think, there's a, there's a few things. Um, but to be honest, uh, the thing I smile about the most is um, when my partner comes home and he's, he's just elated to see me. Um, so <laughs> so, you know, sometimes, like I said, sometimes we take things for granted, but, you know, when he, when he walks in and he's just all smiles and happy and, and I, you know, I just feel like the most important person in the world, then, yeah, oh. then, then that's it. Then I'm done. <laughs> then I'm all smiling. <laughs> You'll be very happy to know that for the interview, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, not the end yet. Okay, let's play now the word association game. I'm going to give away some words and just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? All right. Politics. Um, negativity. Okay. <laughs> one word for love. Um, happiness. Money. Business. Family. Togetherness. Sex. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. Fulfillment. I think I had said before. Um, how about religion? Touchy subject. <laughs> <laughs> One word for fear. 
doubt friendship um love desire uh happiness i, I think i said happiness no it's okay okay you can, you can repeat <laughs> regrets um sadness success amazing one word for happiness um family one word for south africa beautiful and the last one now nelson mandela inspirational beautiful let's pretend now i'm going to meet your lovely partner for a coffee and i'm going to ask him define chris in one positive word and one negative word only what your partner would say uh positive maybe that i love you deeply beautiful um negative uh i, I think he would say that uh, difficult um, um, I might be difficult sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see some work in progress? Definitely, I'm trying. I'm hard. I'm hard at work. <laughs> Chris, let's play now. Chris and the magic box, and you can ask me a question. You can ask me a question now, Chris. Um. All right. Through through your life. What was the most amazing experience that you've got, you've had, or um, yeah, what was like something that really, you know, like you can't forget it. It will always be with you. Right. Besides, besides this project that I'm working right now, that's something that's wow for me. It takes so my day, my nights, everything. It's just all, all my life is about this project. Besides that, I, I believe, uh, Chris, when I left Brazil when I was 19 years old, I think when I look back, my God, I was 19. I like when you see about age, you know what I mean? And I crossed the whole the whole world just to go to another, another continent, another country. And I believe that um, When I look back, for me, uh, it was one of the best experience that I ever had. Just the fact that I left my home, no, my home country, my place where I was born and to go to another country where everything was so different, culture, you know, weather, everything was very different. I think that the moment, um, since the moment when I left Brazil until the moment when I was living in Portugal before. So okay. I lived there for five years before moving to, to England. So I think that the, 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 the moment when I left Brazil, when I, took the, when I took that plane for the very first time, was my very first time in a plane and flying all the way to Europe. I think that moment for me was very powerful, special, scary, everything like in one, you know, a lot of emotions at the time. And when, when I look back, I think that for me was a moment that literally changed my life and uh, literally, um, you know, was like a beginning, was like a born again, um, you know. So I think that the moment that when I left Brazil, that period for me, it's uh, when I look back, it's like, my God, I, it was a big step in my life. I think it's, uh, you know, my life, it, it, it changed everything. Everything about my life, it changed since I left um, Brazil when I was 19 years old. So yeah, I think that moment uh, for me, it's something that is going to always be here. You know what I mean? It's never going to forget. Yes. <laughs> oh, awesome. Stunning, man. Stunning. Chris, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy the interview? I did. It was fun. It was really, really fun. I, I, I watched some of the videos you've made before, so I had an idea, but uh -huh. yeah, you, you, you don't really know until you're sitting in front of the camera. <laughs> so, but it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time, your time on, on, on the weekend for, for the interview. I really appreciate that. But before you go, I would like to share a positive message or a positive quote, something that inspires you in life. Um, something that we're currently doing with our business as well, it's, um, it's always to be inspiring. Um, so no matter what you do in life, it's, it's be inspiring, um, inspire other people to, to whatever they do, to live a better life, to have a better future. You have to be that person that 
inspires other people. Amazing. I love the message. <laughs> thanks so much thanks. for sharing that. Chris, thanks so much for the interview. All the regards for your partner, for your family, and uh, we keep in touch. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, William, and thank you for having me. Amazing. The pressure is all mine. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.